Hey guys! I'm back! It's me! It's Kelsey! <laughs> Obviously, it's my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm super tired today because I put together a desk. I literally put together a desk myself. I did it. It was awesome. Like, I'm using the desk right now to stream. So, you might think putting together a desk is easy, but it isn't easy. I've got to fix my background, by the way. I don't like... I mean, the desk is going to stay here, but I've got to figure something out. I've actually pulled it out from the wall because it was like, I I didn't like how it looked. I still don't like how it looks, but yeah, so I had to screw the screws in and my freaking hand's killing me from the screwdriver. Like, it hurts right here. You probably can't tell, but there's like a mark there because like you have to do this. It's insane. So anyway, I'm a freaking builder now. I built a desk and it was insane. Also, I got my first shot of the vaccine today, so I am healthy. I, or getting healthy or whatever, getting protection and safe. So anyway, we've got Good Guy Dave in the chat, we've got Nails in the chat, and we've got Rob in the chat. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate all of you so much. And today, we're talking my favorite topic, horror. And, you know, it really doesn't matter if we talk horror movies or horror literature, horror books, horror paperbacks, whatever you want to say. I like it all. Horror is awesome. It's a really cool genre, no matter what the medium. So, I'm really excited because recently, I've kind of become obsessed with paperbacks from hell. And how I learned about these old school horror paperbacks was from the book, the nonfiction book by Grady Hendrix and Will Erickson called Paperbacks from Hell. And so, it basically, I know I've talked about this a lot on the stream, but it's my new obsession, like I said. Basically, the book chronicles the 70s and 80s horror boom and all the paperbacks that were released. It sh features all kinds of cool cover art from the books that were released during that time. And it gives you some synopses of some of the more absurd books. But it also has hidden gem authors and hidden gem titles and works specifically mentioned in the book as well, which I have been starting to check out. So that is what we are looking at today is I've actually bought and found a local bookstore where I found literal, literal first edition copies of these paperbacks from hell. So I'm pretty excited because I went to a bookstore, I think last weekend, and I was so bummed because I couldn't find any horror at all. Like, there was, like, one horror book in the whole bookstore, and we went to multiple bookstores. So I was like, we're not gonna have anywhere near us that sells horror paperbacks. So then I went on a binge and bought stuff on eBay and on Amazon and on Etsy, and it's way more expensive than buying in person. So, a few days later, though, after I did this whole internet binge, I found a store locally that sells the paperbacks. And they, like, all they sell is paperbacks, period. There's only one thing I'll mention, it's my one gripe about the collection, because most book collectors would, like, scoff at this. And I'm scoffing at this, too, honestly. But I really can't complain too much because... Because there's no other place to go. So anyway, they stamp the books there. Already bad. They stamp the books here, also bad, and they put stickers on some of the books, but not on others. This one didn't have a sticker. But on, on top of all that, they black out the price because they think, you know, obviously they're going to sell it for more than what it used to be worth. A little more at least. Like, this was probably like two bucks, three bucks, I don't know. Anyway, they, they mark it out. I, I just, I hope I could talk to the owner and be like, I'm a collector and... You know, most collectors don't, I mean, I don't know how to bring it up nicely, but most collectors do not like that. Like, it's stamped all over. No, no, no. Why? Why? <laughs> I don't know, but it kind of ruins it a little bit, but, but not really. I'm trying to stay positive here. This is the only bookstore near me that sells these. Of course, whenever I go out of town in the future, I will be on the hunt for used bookstores and hopefully copies that don't look like this. So... And Dave says, yeah, marking the books like that is awful. It really is. And, like, I know they're thinking in their head, well, this is, like, a used paperback store. And they're thinking, oh, let's put a stamp on the inside that says, you can come bring the book back and we'll trade you for a different book. So they're literally not even having collectors in mind, obviously. Obviously, they're just having people who like to read in mind when they put these stamps. They're just not even thinking of a collector. So that's the one bad thing. So I'm kind of bummed about the stamps and everything, but whatever. So before we get to the book haul because I've got 20 books to show you guys with cool covers, and some of them have cool inside step-back art, and we'll, we'll get there. 
I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, all right. Nails says to say something casually, like, oh, it's a shame about the stamps on these books. Like, you know, kind of almost making it seem like I wouldn't buy because of the stamps. That That's a good way maybe to bring it up because I don't know what else to do. So before we get into the reveal of the 20 books that I bought, and there's more coming, by the way. So this isn't the only book reveal because I did those online purges, which I, like the binge spending. I wish, I wish I wouldn't have done that because then I found these and it was like a lot cheaper to just get 20 of these versus like 20 online because of shipping and stuff. It's ridiculous. So what I'm reading now, and it's from the library, I don't own a copy of this. I'm loving it. It's Michael McDowell's The, en the Elementals. And I'm about halfway through right now. It's subtle at some points and slow at some points. But when, like, they have, some of these passages have these descriptions of, like, something scary. I don't want to spoil it, but, um, it's really creepy. So when the creeps come, it's, like, pretty, pretty, just very descriptive. Where there's this one passage, literally, like, I read it, and it was describing somebody who, like, they were made out of sand. Then the sand melted away to reveal something underneath. And I was like, oh my god. Like, I could imagine what Michael McDowell wrote in his description. It was just so vivid imagery. Very powerful stuff. And I, I imagined it in my mind and I actually got chills. And, like, hardly ever does a book do that to me. Ever. Uh, and it's not, like, super scary. It was just, like, a really vivid description. And I could just picture it almost like as if it was a movie in my head. This one little scene in particular. So far. I'm sure it's going to get even crazier as I get closer to the end of the book. So this is what I'm reading right now. And I gotta say, I'm really enjoying it. Again, I've talked about McDowell before. Screenwriter of Beetlejuice. The movie Beetlejuice. So I've actually got a call from the library saying that a book that I've been trying to get for, like, a month was available so I went and picked it up today and it was a book I had on hold it finally got there let's go play at the Adams or Adamses since it's plural it's their house I've heard a lot of creepy terrible things about this book I'm really scared to read it actually I'm sure it's gonna be really disturbing and uh, I don't know I just have a feeling that it's like um, that movie better watch out um, it's a Christmas movie. It just, the premise seems a lot like that, and, like, Better Watch Out really upset me, so I have a feeling this is gonna be the same way, and yeah. Alright, so just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the light, and, I, and by the way, I'm gonna take my key off so that you guys can see the books better. Now, yes, that's way better. Alright, so, let's go play at the Adamses, and there's a forward, a new forward by Grady Hendrix! A new intro. So that's kind of cool, and I look forward to reading that, although he says to read the introduction after you read the book, because he must spoil things in the introduction. So I'll eventually get to that. But before I get to that one, after I finish Elementals, I have one more from the library that I've actually got on loan. I can't show you the title, but I've already talked about this. This is coming up soon. I'm going to read Night Things. It's very hard to show this in the right way. Alright, and finally, uh, one of my new book purchases, it's not a used book, it's a new book, but it is a reprint of an old book, another Michael McDowell novel, The Amulet, and I'm really excited about this one, so I can't wait to read it. You know, everyone really praises The Elementals and his other series called Blackwater, and I am going to read Blackwater, the whole series, too, but uh, I really wanted this one. Hopefully I find, like, an old school 70s or 80s version, I can't remember what year what decade it was released, but hopefully I find an original version somewhere in a bookstore down the line, because the real cover, the original cover is way cooler than this. I mean, this is still kind of cool, but the original cover is way better. Dave says, I'm gonna read a lot of books on his to-read list on Goodreads. Wait till you see, Dave, actually, I found one of the books on both you, your and my to read list because I remember I saw it on your your to read list. I found it in the bookstore, the original cover of it. So I think I gotta look at your flipping to read list to remember which title of these it is. But whatever, we'll get there. Hopefully, I remember. All right, so let's get going here because I've got a lot of books to get through. The first one by Owen Brooks, Inheritance. And as you can see, it's a cool mirror with a face. It looks like it's cracked here. But look, in the crack, there seems to be something poking through. A hand. What's behind there? And old school paperbacks are very well known for doing this. So there's actual like artwork behind, like a cutout essentially, a step back. 
So yes, kids drowning. Let's get closer here. See, look at that detail there. Beautiful artwork. So cool. All right, let's kind of pan down here. Very cool. See, I don't even care about the books, like, reading these per se, especially because, by the way, this spine is actually good. The more you read paperbacks, the more their spines get messed up. So some of these I might even buy, like, or, you know, get a Kindle edition to read them if I were to read the actual story. Not all of them have Kindle editions, though. But yeah, I, like, purely bought this for the cover because I thought it was neat. Inheritance. And like Grady Hendrix in his nonfiction book, Paperbacks from Hell, he points out that almost every book, like in the blurb on the front or the back, they always mention like The Exorcist, Rosemary's Baby, The Omen, like all these like famous books that kind of kicked off certain subgenres of horror paperbacks and the big boom that went, took place during the 70s and 80s. So of course the back does say a chilling thriller in the tradition of The Exorcist and Rosemary's ba Baby. So yes, it mentions it just like Grady Hendrix says, they all mention it. Regina had some little minds of her own. She was the foster mother to a strange band of paranormal children. The townspeople joked about the freak farm she ran, but she knew the truth. Her children had rare powers, rare gifts. Grizzle could hurl a lamp across the room without moving. Linda and Reggie could leave their bodies. Carl could think his thoughts in someone else's head. And then there was Peter. Now the scenario could... Be completed. Now the most ancient of taboos would be violated. Now she could plot the play of death and revenge, and a little boy would be her leading man. Some of them just the the descriptions are so crazy. Um, I love the way this one looks. Look at the bloody envelopes, really cool. Ramsey Campbell, well known author, Count the Count of Eleven. I love the blood detail there. Look how cool the blood looks. Very nicely detailed blood. This is a compliment here. Dave is saying now I'm sounding like Cameron from YouTube. Uh, yeah, he's like my favorite YouTuber right now. I've watched like 20 of his videos. I love him. <laughs> I really love him. Um, yeah, I hope to be like kind of as knowledgeable as him one day. He, he has like such a great collection and his collection is in like mint condition. So really cool. Mint condition. I don't know how he does it, but yeah, mint condition. Unfair, I want my, uh, I want my stuff to be in mint condition. I really do, but it's not. Uh, but this one's pretty good. I mean, look at the spine of this one. This one's not so bad. And the cover, good shape too. But again, this is a later novel. Um, it is from 1992, so not the 80s, but still, I love the cover and I was like, I must get this. But yes, everyone check out Cameron Channy. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing his name right because I just kind of like zone in when he starts talking about the books but he's got the coolest set too like I'm so jealous of his set it's like the background is his bookshelves and he's got these awesome colored lights and oh he's the best I love his channel I highly recommend his channel so go check it out especially if you love horror so here's another Ramsey Campbell book The Influence and this one is mentioned in paperbacks from hell so look pretty cool one the house kind of reflects here let's take a look and kind of pan down Okay. As you can see, there's a little girl in a window, but is that all? No, that's not all. If you open it up, this is what we're talking about. Let me get you the better light. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about, about some of these having such cool art. Look at this. She's standing in like a demon hand. Very, very cool. All right. So it says... A novel of considerable intensity, as harrowing as any Campbell has ever written, says the Washington Post book world. So really, this is just, I'm sure the blurb's on the inside. Yes. Actually, it's just more blurbs. But again, I'm really excited about this. This one's from 1988, so. And I was super happy because it's in pretty good condition, except the spine is a little messed up. But that's what to expect most of the time from used bookstores. All right, now we've got Elisa W. Cantrell. And I'm really excited about this one because of the pumpkins. I do have some sticker residue right here. This is one of the ones that had the sticker on it because she would only accept cash. The ones with stickers, she would only accept cash for. Really weird, really random. But anyway, I like this one a lot. Uh, pumpkins. And this is actually, I believe, a sequel to another book that I also want to read by her. The Mance, it's called. And that one has a cool cover, too. 
I'm really excited about it. And, like, look. Very Halloween-y. I don't know. It's just awesome. A time to dress up like a monster from your worst nightmare and collect good things to eat. Only this year, the monsters aren't costumes and nightmares are real. And the good things to eat are people's souls. Torments. Uh, that's awesome. So they're talking about Halloween. Like, all that can happen on Halloween. It's insane. Uh, this is really cool. And I just freaking love... Look at that pumpkin. Come on now. Look at the pumpkin with the glowing eyes. And then the pile of creepy pumpkins behind it. Heck yeah. And Nail says he, she's going to check out Cameron's channel. Yes, you should. He's awesome. Now, here's a book I'm really excited about. Sins of the Flesh by Don Davis and Jay Davis. And I also have to do Goo Gone and try to get the remnants of a sticker off of this one. It better come off. It better flip and come off. So, when you first take a look at it, it doesn't seem like it's that great. But then, again, one, notice this little claw over here. Yeah, pretty freaking cool, guys. Look at this. Let me kind of get you different lighting. Really cool. Oh, my God. The wages of sin is death. An innocent mound of grass-covered earth, a weathered wooden door, a root cellar shelter from violent storms, storage for the farm's produce. Did I just say storage? Storage for the farm's produce. On water... Oh, I cannot read today. It's because of the desk building. Because it really took a lot out of me, the freaking desk building. On Walter Sykes' farm, the root cellar hides a dark and dangerous secret. A monster slumbers there, imprisoned by powerful magics. A monster that once was Walter Sykes' eldest son? Transformed by a madman's curse, Jesse Sykes is a killing machine. Twenty years ago, he cut a bloody swath through the small town of Gideon until his mother struck him down with her own occult powers. Now Eleanor Sykes is dying. The bonds that hold the monster are weakening. Soon Jesse will be free. No one in Gideon will be safe sins of the flesh all right moving right along i really like these books this one's called forbidden objects and i love how they've got like raised you could feel the title you could feel some elements on the book it's got a lot of texture to it love books like that this is by maggie davis slimed and blind as death the dead man sits Slimed and blind as death. Slimed. That's my reflection. That's my reflection in all the windows. A pale woman with the banshee eyes. Hair afire. A strange figure. I wouldn't claim it for my own. Out of the corners of my eyes, I see the aura. Fingers of brightness groping up and down the walls. People who claim they can throw themselves into trances in crowded rooms. And to order, must be fakes. In reality, it's like giving oneself over to an amateur magician for deadly parlor games. One never knows what will happen. I see myself in the blackened window glass, and it may not be me. Forbidden objects. So let's take a look at the cover here. Again, the title, it's raised. She's looking into a mirror. Let me kind of give you a better... There's a good color scheme here. And here's it from far away. I like this one a lot. I like them all. What am I saying? I really like the color scheme of this one specifically. Here is one that I know Cameron has, but this one's in terrible shape. Uh, I've really got to clean it up. There's one, there's some residue on this one too, because again, it had a cash sticker on it. And I've got to get this residue off with Goo Gone. But it's called Halo by Chet Day. And, you know, this was also mentioned in Paperbacks from Hell. And, of course, the one bad thing about my copy is it's got, like, some melted area down here where there's, like, something spilled or melted there and kind of damaged the book a little bit. So that's the one bad thing. But it's kind of like a demonic jock. I kind of like that idea. Billy's so awesome. You could just die. Yeah, whatever. Meet Billy Halo, one hell of a guy, wink wink. He's an all-state linebacker, a straight-A student, the gorgeous football star all the girls are dying to date. What a smile. Dazzling practice perfect. A smile you could go for, until his laser-green eyes chill you to the bone. 
Billy loves the lab and his animal experiments, and some of his friends say he's wound a bit tight, but Billy knows what he wants and he knows how to get it. Easy, like pulling the wings off a off of a fly. Cool, charming Billy. As long as he's not crossed, as long as you don't rouse the dark, ugly evil lurking inside of him. Because if you do, you'll never live to tell. So yes. I, uh, I'm really excited about this one. Not the best shape, but still not bad. Not too bad. James Roberts says, I'm donating, or he says that he's donating some of his horror books to his city's free little library this weekend. Oh, that's really nice of you, James. That's such a nice thing to do. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be really thankful, and like he says, he thinks it's time for someone else to enjoy the books instead of him. In addition to him, I should say. That's a really cool thing, James. That's a cool thing to do. I have also been wanting to do something for my library soon and uh, donate some books. I've got some, like, duplicates of some things that I've already read and stuff of that nature. I, I'm thinking about donating it or maybe bringing it to the park where they've got like a little communal library little thing. This one's in really rough shape. Also mentioned in Paperbacks from Hell because I just went through the book just to see. I was like, how many of these books are actually in Paperbacks from Hell? And a lot of these are actually. So this one's called Nocturnal by Ken. I don't even know how to, you know, I'm bad at pronunciation, guys. E-U-L-O. A novel of midnight terror. And I like it because it's very shiny. You could see it's like a woman. I like how the nocturnal is spelled out like right at the bottom of her hair. And you could see that it's a skeleton face. Let me try to get a good angle for you. There's a good angle. As you could see, really rough shape on this one. I, uh, this one wasn't expensive at all because it's so bad off. I'm I'm always willing to maybe replace these down the line if I get it a good deal and I find a great copy. So like I don't mind if it's like two bucks buying it now and then maybe replacing it if, if I ever find a good one later and then rehoming this one. So John Ferris, Son of the Endless Night. I was excited to find this one because I knew there was a cool step back art piece. So first let me just show you the regular cover yeah it doesn't seem like it's anything much right notice though we could see some wings here and you could feel them so what's behind the cover though pretty damn cool don't you think that's cool i sure do look at that demon i sound demented what the hell is wrong look at that demon as if like demons are awesome and stuff I don't like like demons or believe in demons, but I just think like the art of like horror is so cool. All right, lots more to go. A whole stack left to go. All right, this one I already showed you guys. Uh, if you were here for a previous stream with me, I think it was like a stream or two ago. I picked this one up in actually a Texas bookstore. This one doesn't have a stain. Oh wait. This one does have a stamp. What is with the bookstores stamping the books? Anyway, they didn't stamp the inside, though. I think that was already there. So this is a first edition, and it is from 1987, also by John Ferris. So, Nightfall. And, like, you could see it's a mom and a kid basically running through a southern bayou. Look at those cypress knees. That's what they're called. The little things sticking out the bayou. Cypress knees. This one's by P.T. Foster. Etched in flesh, signed in blood, consummated in flame, the vow. This one's kind of raunchy, so you could see the vow is kind of marked into her back. I just thought it was kind of creepy. Like, look at that demon hand. That's pretty, it's that's pretty disturbing. So, uh, I was like, whoa. This one, the spine's terrible. There's like messed up stuff all over it. Ew. Again, maybe I could kind of, it's almost like a residue of a sticker. Maybe I could like get some goo gone on, on that too, but I don't know. Here is something by Charles L. Grant. This is the one I found in the lone New Orleans bookstore, the, the other bookstore, which had only one horror book in it. So I can't ever really count on this bookstore who had this one because they didn't really even have a horror section. It was just like in the mystery section. It's called Night Songs and it's like, 
I showed this the other day. It's like a mermaid sea creature. Sorry, the lighting, guys. I really, I practiced with the lighting before I went on, and it's still not doing right. This one I'm pretty excited about. It's not from the bookstore. It's from Amazon, but it is still a first edition. It's called Siren by Linda Crockett Gray, and I just love that the candle flames are, like, in the hand. And it looks like a, like a claw or, like, a witch's hand. And just, it feels really cool. It's raised, like a lot of these are. So neat. And, like, let me show you a little bit further back to where you could see the cool colors. I really like the different colors. It's bluish, purplish. There's some pink and yellow. I like the scheme of this one a lot. Nice color scheme. All right, When Spirits Walk, and this, Christine Gentry, and I'm excited about this one because, I don't know, I think it looks really cool, like killer rabbits, like, yeah, killer rabbits. Very neat. I like it a lot. Here's the whole thing. So, Supernatural Murders, Bloody Beyond Belief. The number of gruesome incidents occurring in the vicinity seem to be accelerating at a frightening speed. A ton of adversity had descended on the territory. A wake of shattered bodies had left a bloody trail. They were not only visitors of what had happened, but also of what was about to happen. Something, or somebody, has killed a lot of people within a week. A rational man could not explain what he has seen. A man was found dead, gutted like a fish and stuffed with corn. Are there really spirits involved, or does someone want us to believe that to throw us off the trail. No one is going to volunteer useful information if they think witches are behind all of this. Maybe it is some supernatural spirit because frankly, there is no one who could get a mule to eat human hands or have a man wind up dead atop an electrical pole. You won't sleep much until you discover the answer. That is a confusing blurb on the back, I would say. That is a very confusing blurb. Still, even if I never read it, the cover's pretty amazing. Evil Bunny, says Dave. And Nail says I should ask Google on if they would like to sponsor a stream since I'm mentioning them so much. I know, right? So this one is not an exciting cover, but I've heard good things about the story itself. I heard good things from someone who said they heard good things. So it's kind of like a secondhand hearing of good things, and I believe I heard it from Cameron on his YouTube channel. He said he heard good things about it. <laughs> um, really... Greeley's Cove, if I'm even saying it right, by John Gideon. And again, plain, kind of plain cover, but this is one that I would actually like to read if it is, you know, good like people claim. Then I, I did look up the ratings, though. It wasn't, like, the best on Goodreads, but horror is so subjective, by the way. That's something that I do want to mention is that it's super subjective. So somebody could love one horror story because maybe it's so ridiculous, like, Troll 2. Then that same person could be like, I hate it. It's trash. It's garbage. Then someone could love one that's super disturbing and like really like very scary. And another person could actually hate it because one reason or another, like, oh, I didn't like how the characters, you hated them, or I didn't like this or that. So literally like anything, almost any form of art, it's subjective how you feel about it. And so this is no different. And so, you know, I could love this while somebody else might think it's mediocre. So who knows? You have been there before if you have ever known fear, Greeley's Cove. The first miracle was a joyful one. The sudden cure of a young autistic boy in Greedy's Cove. The other miracles were different, stranger, darker miracles like murder and resurrection. Now every man and woman in Greeley's Cove is afraid, afraid of things that walk in the night, afraid of the house on the edge of town, afraid of the loved ones they buried in Greeley's Cove. Not since Salem's Lot has a novel captured, captured the horrors that live so close to home. Of course, that's a reference to Stephen King with his book, Salem's Lot. So again, a lot of books mention Stephen King, a lot of book covers mention The Exorcist, Rosemary's Baby, The Others, uh, The Omen, so it's kind of crazy how all these were kind of like banking on those big hits and trying to like kind of ride the wave of popularity of the horror genre because of those titles that really did well and were bestsellers. Here's one I'm really excited about, it's another step back, Demon's Eye, Stephen Gresham. Bloody horror awaited those in the glare of the demon's eye. Alright, so again, let's take a close look before I open up 
So it looks like kind of like a steps leading down to a basement. Let's, ooh, let's see. So here is the full thing. Really cool, like a bat dude. Uh, it's like, instead of a werewolf, it's like a Batman. Like, like Batman, but not like Batman, Batman. Like a legit Batman. Maybe he can see not by hearing very well, so. Sonar and stuff. Let's get a closer look, if I can get the lighting right. Ah, here we go. Look at that face. Oh my god. Pretty cool. Look at that claw. It's coming for you. I'm gonna get you. I like it. I like this one a lot. One last look at the cover. And the font of the title. Also raised. We don't have many more. This one I was pretty excited about. Uh, Zebra did a lot of stuff. Zebra, the publisher, did a lot of stuff with skeletons. I've learned from reading Grady Hendrix's Paperbacks from Hell. But I also have kind of learned that or that has been emphasized when I've seen other people's YouTube channels talking about old horror fiction. And so yes, Zebra did a lot of covers where it featured some kind of skeleton art. And this one's really cool. I love it because, you know, obviously the staircase, parts of the staircase are replaced by bones and then there's a skull there. And it's a kid looking real scared. The Shadow Man. And this one is by, like I said, Stephen Gresham, just like the last one we looked at. So he has a lot of cool covers, by the way, so I'm kind of excited about that. Nails says, I make her love everything. Oh, I love you, Nails. Beware the Shadow Man. Joey felt a chill as he stared at the luminous green dots on the screen of his computer's assisted playmate. What did Cap know? So, computer-assisted playmate, Cap is what it is as, like, a, an abbreviation. What did Cap know about the Shadow Man? Joey's dad said there was nothing to be scared of because the Shadow Man wasn't real. To be scared of... Wait. Sorry. The Shadow Man wasn't real, but Cap... Joey's best friend in the world would never lie to him or let anything bad happen to him. But even Cap can't help Joey when the Shadow Man comes to visit him. The Shadow Man can hide anywhere under the bed, in the closet, behind the mirror. The Shadow Man can even make Joey do things a little boy should never do. Especially when it hides in the sophisticated security circuitry of the one thing Joey trusts most. The Shadow Man. So that means Cap is gonna get, like messed up by the shadow man so there's two things at play here this computer assisted program guy who's like a playmate cap and the shadow man and something really weird apparently happens i don't know i don't know i'm pretty excited about this one because i like this author i've actually read this author already this is not a first edition but i don't know it's close enough for me uh i it is an old school cover and this, it says it's by Jessica Hamilton, but that is a different name that the author Ken Greenhall wrote under. And he wrote the book Hellhound, which I read like a month or two ago, and it was glorious. I love that book. It was so creepy and good and like creepy in a subtle way, kind of, in the way that he wrote so sophisticatedly. Like the dog, you, you got the point of view of the dog in the book, and it was just kind of so chillingly calm and the things he was talking about in such a chillingly calm manner that's what made it scary it was like wow he's being so calm describing all these like terrible things and that's what was awesome and ken greenhall did a great job and i actually found an ebook version of this and i read for like the first few pages and it's already awesome um i'm gonna wait because i'm actually might suggest this for my book club i started so i'm hoping that people might vote on it I'm not nominating it anytime soon, but in the future, I'd love to read this with a book club. Elizabeth by Jessica Hamilton, and look at the cool cover. Like a mirror shattered, so it kind of duplicates the image a little. What did these people have in common? Elizabeth's mother, Elizabeth's father, Elizabeth's uncle, Elizabeth's aunt, Elizabeth's grandmother, Elizabeth's teacher. They all learned about Elizabeth's power too late. Elizabeth terrifyingly real is what the back says again i love this author jessica hamilton aka ken greenhall uh, wonderful underrated should be more well known 
I loved Hellhound. I loved that story. This is one, this is the one that Dave had on his to read list. Good guy Dave is in the chat right now. And this is the one he had on his to read list. And I have it on to, my to read list. Deliver Us From Evil by Alan Lee Harris. And yes, this is a first edition. And look at the freaking badass cover. Look at it. Let me show it far first. And then we'll, we'll get it closer up. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, he looks evil. Heck yeah, man. Look at this. God, that looks such detail. And by the way, it's raised up so you could feel this part. You could feel the creepy hands coming out of the water. You could feel the guy's freaking messed up face. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Alright, the snake well, deep in the steamy backwoods of George... One day I will learn to silence. Keep the change, you filthy animal. One day I will silence it, okay? The snake well, deep in the steamy backwoods of Georgia, is where a terrified 12-year-old girl loses her innocence and her life. It is an act so hideous and bizarre that even the few in the town of L Lucerne who know the details keep them as their own tortured secret. Fourteen years later, an orphan boy, a stranger, arrives in the sleepy town. With his arrival, the final stages of an ancient prophecy are set in motion, as evil stirs once again in the snake well, and the town's worst nightmare stalks its quiet nighttime streets. Now, a voice calls from the deepest woods, drifting over bayou and river, rustling through caduzo vines, echoing in crawl spaces, beckoning to an orphan boy and a sheriff's son to save the unsuspecting town from a horrible destiny. Deliver us from evil! So yeah, uh, that sounds really fun. And, by the way, I don't know if I pronounce Kudzo? Kudzo vines? What? The you know I'm bad at pronunciation. Just a warning. Uh, just a reminder as well. For those of you who already know, this is probably the one I'm most excited about. Everyone makes a big deal about this book, and it's in great shape. Uh, look at the spine. Spine's in great shape. I'm pretty excited about this one. All right, let's take a close look real quick. You might say, what's the big deal, Kelsey? That looks okay, but, you know, what's the big deal? It's just somebody in a wedding dress. You can't even see their face. Well... Yeah. Yeah, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing art. This one's highly featured in Paperbacks from Hell. And look how good condition this is in. Freaking just a few bucks. Oh, man, what, what a steal. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I knew that cough was coming. I got too excited. I got way too excited, okay? Let's just look at this one more time. The Gilgul. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, but a lot of people have talked about it. I just love and I love how good condition it's in. All right, it's better when I come from this angle. Oh my God, look. Look at this. Look at the detail. Can I go up again? I am pretty excited. It's in great condition. And this one didn't have a sticker on it, thank God. I would, she seemed to put stickers on like the, the more, the ones that people would want more, like, I think she knew which ones were good ones, and that's the one she put the cash sticker on. I don't know why, but thank God she didn't put the cash sticker on this one. I would have been upset if I would have had to get res residue off of it. This one's kind of subtle, but I like it. I like kind of the spinning look here. The lake. Beware. R.J. Jensen. When night falls, a savage hunger must be fed, and no one is safe. The lake. So, pretty cool. This one's pretty beat up. And let's take a look at the date. 1983. This is not a first edition. I just thought it was cool, and it was super cheap. I like this one, because uh, dolls, creepy dolls on a cover is pretty cool. Annabelle. Pretty dollies can have very ugly tempers. I like that a lot. It's very cool. And the whole thing is textured so pretty cool different angles of light here look at that look at that really neat i love this 
We got Cat in the chat. Hey, Cat. We're just taking a look at some of these horror paperbacks. I love this one. It's a doll getting hung. Pretty creepy. I showed you guys this one already. I'm pretty pumped about it. Cat's Eye. Uh, William W. Johnstone. He's written some bonkers stuff. This isn't, like, this is actually the sequel in the Cats series. There's, like, one more about cats that's ahead of this one. But I found this one in Texas, not in New Orleans, not in Louisiana. So, uh, it was a steal. It was, like, two bucks. I had to get it. And it's in great condition compared to some of the other ones. Except for the spine. It's kind of bad. But, uh, the cover looks nice. And I also already showed this one, Mirror, by Graham Masterton. And I can't wait to read stuff by Graham Masterton. Actually, I've heard a lot of people talk about how this book is actually really entertaining. So I literally cannot wait to read it. And here's a look at... The Mirror cover. Alright, and last but not least, Duffy Stein, featured in Paperbacks from Hell, Ghost Child. He has a power and a rage that never dies. Lonely, he reaches out to claim the living. Who dares befriend the ghost child? All right, doesn't look like too creepy of a cover. I mean, kind of creepy, but there's more. Yeah. I like it. He's trapped. Is he trapped in a different dimension? What's going on there? But yeah. Pretty cool. I love these step back art work. These step back artworks are so cool. Really cool covers. Over a century ago, someone huddled in the dark prison of the queer little room, hiding, hidden. Someone wrote the wrenching suicide note, begging forgiveness, warning, he will return to kill again. And now, the Talmans are leaving the dirt and danger of New York behind. Wise, gentle Rufus beautiful Mickey, 11-year-old Todd, and little Jenny will bring new life to the old house in Glendon, Vermont. Their dream come true. They will change everything except the toy room. It is filled with treasures and terrors that will reach out to possess them, move them to reenact a drama of ancient wrath, doom them to live and die, helpless playthings caught in a nightmare they can neither stop nor understand. Ghost Child. Very good stuff. Lots of fun. Demented Pictures, hey, thank you so much for joining. Again, we were just talking. I just showed a whole bunch of paperbacks that I just bought this last weekend. I collected them uh, from a local bookstore. Some of them are first editions. Some of them are in rough shape. And some of them are in good shape. So it's a kickoff to my collection because I'm a new collector. Kind of obsessed now. I'm, a, I'm big into collecting things in general. So, yes, I'm a new horror paperback collector, but I'm an old school collector in general because I've collected lots of things. I've got a Goosebumps collection back there that I've had for a very long time. It's so hard to point the right way. So, there's only some of it. I've got more in a different house at my parents' house. Uh, I collect Nickelodeon stuff, which, by the way, guys, you're watching on my YouTube channel right now. I will have a video uploaded in the next week where I give a tour of my Nickelodeon area in my room, my Nickelodeon, 90s Nickelodeon collection. And the reason I do that is because I took out the bed that had all these 90s Nickelodeon stuffed animals on it and it went with like my whole collection. I took out the bed and put in a desk. So I did a tour video last night and I'm going to edit it and upload it next week. And, by the way, Kat and I just did a whole chat about holiday horror movies. We kind of did our part one of our chat because we're still in the marathon right now. We're still watching more holiday horror movies. In fact, tonight I'm supposed to watch April Fool's Day, the horror movie. So we'll see if that happens. And then later I've got some Easter movies coming up this weekend. Easter horror movies specifically that I will be checking out. So, very pumped about all of that, and in the next few days, you'll be able to see me and Kat's chat, which I will upload. We talk about all kinds of things. We talk about My Bloody Valentine, we talk about Terror Train, uh, Terror Train from 1980, and My Bloody Valentine from 1981. We talk about Leprechaun and Leprechaun in the Hood, which Kat has some funny things to 
to say about that movie. Oh my gosh. Uh, I had such a good time talking to her about that. Also, we talked about um, two Mardi Gras movies because Kat and I are from New Orleans and a lot of people don't know about the holiday, but it was important for us to find horror movies that represented Mardi Gras, and we did. Uh, she watched Fat Tuesday, and I also watched that movie, but I watched Candyman 2 on top of it, which takes place in New Orleans. And some of it was actually filmed in New Orleans too, as was Fat Tuesday, that whole movie was filmed in New Orleans, so that was pretty good. And so I'm pretty excited for you guys to hear the chat with Kat because we go really in depth and we actually have some fun facts about some of the horror movies. And again, I, I love horror. It doesn't matter if it's horror literature or fiction or if it's horror movies. Horror anything is freaking cool. So Demented Pictures is asking, am I looking into becoming a horror tuber? Yes, I am. I've been talking horror on and off, but you know, my YouTube channel used to be more wrestling, pro wrestling related. Now I'm switching gears. I will do a lot of horror and I have been doing a lot of horror talks, but I also do 90s stuff too, like pop culture, 90s things like 90s Nickelodeon stuff and 90s movies stuff like Free Willy and Blank Check movie review stuff like that but yeah in general I would love to get into more of the horror tube realm that'll be a lot of fun uh, and I've really got to get in I've really got to get into doing more of that but I've been doing a lot of it lately I've been talking a ton about these flipping awesome old school paperbacks from hell and there goes one of my books toppling over but again stuff like Elizabeth I've just been having a lot of fun talking about all of these different books, and yeah, I'm excited. And I definitely will check out your channel, Demented Pictures, right after this is over. I'm heading to your channel. And everyone else, why don't you check out Demented Pictures' channel as well, if you love horror? Because it sounds like that's what they do, and I'm really interested in uh, checking it out. So thanks for joining in, in my stream, Demented Pictures. It means a lot. I really appreciate you. Hopefully you'll sub, and I'll sub for you too. Alright guys, I'm about to wrap up the chat a little bit because I am so exhausted from building this desk. Like I said at the beginning of the stream, I freaking went beast, went ham, and built this desk by myself. I literally put it together piece by piece. It was heavy as hell. I freaking used my muscle, my little, mu my tiny muscle, and I did it. And I got the vaccine shot today, so my arm was sore, but uh, yes, I put it all together, so I'm pretty exhausted. That's why it's a shorter stream today, but it is what it is. Uh. I really appreciate you guys hanging, and like I said, this is just the beginning of the collection. More horror to come, and I can't wait to kick off Me and Cat's Book Club, which has officially started our horror-themed book club, which we hopefully will be reading some old-school titles for. We'll see what people vote on for our different reads every month, but I'm hoping some old-school stuff will win every now and then, because right now, that is my jam, and I'm loving it. Thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks, Cat. Thanks, Nails. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Demented Pictures again. Appreciate all of you, uh, and I will check you out, Demented Pictures. And I hope I didn't leave anyone out. Oh, and James Roberts. Thank you so much, James, for hanging out as well. And Kat says, I need to watch April Fool's Day. Don't worry, I'm gonna try my best. Uh, I know Paul wants to watch Snowpiercer, but we'll... I really want to watch April Fool's Day. I'm ta I'm guessing that you really liked it, Kat, if you're saying I've got to watch it. I mean, I'm not not going to watch it. I'm just saying I might not watch it today on April Fool's Day. Or is that an April Fool's joke? Am I pulling your leg here? <laughs> is it a prank? Whatevs. Uh, no, I'm really not sure if I'll get to it or not. But anyway, guys, lots of good stuff coming up on my YouTube channel literally in the next week. If you love 90s Nickelodeon... Yeah, you might like horror, but if you're more into any kind of pop culture and you're loving 90s Nickelodeon stuff, look out for that tour of my room in the next week. Lots of fun. Again, my bed is no more, so I had to do the video before I took the bed out, and I did, and it will be released soon. And also, me and Kat's chat. Thanks, guys. Love you guys. Bye. Keep the change, you filthy animals. You knew I had to say it. I can't ever leave without saying it, but I'm going to come up with a different, a different quote a 90s quote or maybe even a horror quote for next time how about that that's my goal for the next stream come up with a different ending quote this time and quickly I didn't do a Kelsey's karaoke today but uh, I'm gonna do it next time because I've got a song in mind it'll be a lot of fun so stay tuned for that I'm streaming on Sunday on twitch at 2 p.m. central so twitch you can find me twitch.tv slash super kicking it and that's s-u-p-e-r 
K-I-C-K-I-N-G-I-T, and I will put up right before I go, you could see the spelling right here, twitch.tv slash this spelling right here, super kicking it. I almost had to think about the spelling for a second because I was thinking about something else. I was like, how do you spell it again? Anyway, bye for reals this time. And really do keep the change, you filthy animals. Bye.